friends, uh, today we will continue our, our discussion on modeling of synchronous machine. Okay. We will continue on the steady state analysis and then we will talk about the magnetic saturation. <coughs> now, while discussing the steady state analysis, we had discussed earlier that a voltage a voltage behind voltage behind the impedance r a plus j times x q lies along the q axis and that gives us the location of q axis with respect to terminal voltage. Once we establish the location of q axis we are in a position to obtain the d and q components of voltage and currents which are required. Okay. Now, here this is the phasor diagram which shows the that voltage E q bar or E q <coughs> is along the q axis. What we have done is that this is the terminal voltage, this is the load current or terminal current. The phase difference between the terminal voltage and the current is 5. To this we are adding this voltage drop R a i t and adding the voltage drop x q i t. This gives you E q. Now, this voltage E q is uh, along the q axis and the angle between E t terminal voltage and this E q that is the q axis right. This is denoted by the angle delta i. <coughs> now, <coughs> we will uh, establish a term which is the rotor angle or the power angle. Although we have mentioned right now that the power angle is the angle between the q axis and the terminal voltage. Now, we will establish actually that in case there is no load on the machine, that is machine is under no load condition, right, then the terminal voltage, the terminal voltage E t is along the q axis and therefore, when the machine is loaded, right, E t falls back with respect to the q axis. Right. Now, to establish this, we start with our original equations, they are the stator uh, voltage equations, there is E d equal to minus omega r psi q minus r a i d, E q equal to omega r psi d minus r a i q and the field voltage E f d is equal to r f d i f d. While the flux linkages are minus L d i d plus L a d i f d psi q equal to minus L q i q and the flux linkages in the field winding is psi f d equal to L f f d i f d minus L a d i d. In the amortizer uh, on the d axis psi 1 d equal to minus L f 1 d. Now, we are putting amortizers is identified as 1 k equal to 1. I f d minus L a d i d psi 1 q equal to psi 2 q I have, we have assumed here that there are two amortizers on the q axis minus L a q i q. Now, when you consider this system under no load condition right under no load condition there is the i d and i q will be 0. Okay. Now, once i d and i q are 0 you can see here psi q will be 0. Okay. And once psi q is 0 and i d is 0, therefore, what you see here is that E d becomes 0. Okay. Now, with this substitution we write here that under no load condition the d axis flux linkage is equal to L a d i f d that is in these equations you substitute i d i q and E d equal to 0 and psi q is also 0. Therefore, when we make the substitution we find here that psi d is equal to L a d i f d that is the direct axis flux linkage is directly proportional to field current. This is a very important relationship under no load conditions. Psi q is 0, E d is 0, E q is equal to x a d i f d that is the q axis component of the terminal voltage is 
directly proportional to the field current. Okay. Now, we know the terminal voltage E t is equal to E d plus j times E q. Right? That is what we established earlier. Now, since E d is 0, E d is 0 and E q equal to x a d i f d. So, that E t comes out to be equal to j times x a d i f d. Then, in the no load condition, the terminal voltage is, is in quadrature with the direct axis that is j is here and is proportional to the field current I f d. Right? Now, this is all uh, uh, known to all of you because under no load condition, the terminal voltage is directly proportional to the field current excitation load and this voltage is called excitation voltage. Under no load condition, the terminal voltage is the excitation voltage. Now, we can establish a very simple uh, equivalent circuit under steady state operating conditions for a round rotor synchronous generator. And if you consider the round rotor synchronous generator, then x d and x q are equal and this will denote as excess synchronous reactance x d equal to x q equal to excess for a round rotor. Right? Now, when you substitute the value of substitute the value of x d equal to x q equal to x s in the equation for E q, because E q is now becomes E t plus R a plus j times x s I t. We have seen earlier that E q is equal to j times x a d i f d minus x d minus x q i d. Now, the moment the moment the i d is 0, i d is 0, E q is equal to j times x a d i f d. Right? Now, this is what we are trying to establish here that if you do not neglect the armature resistance r a will come right? and uh, x d x q neglecting the uh, leakage reactance right x a d becomes excess right otherwise x d equal to x q equal to excess while x a d is the uh, mutual reactance okay therefore we can write draw a simple a simple equivalent circuit of the synchronous generator where terminal voltage is denoted as E t angle 0 and the excitation voltage is E q angle delta i E q angle delta i and we put an impedance R a plus R a and x s that is impedance is R a plus j times x a very simple equivalent circuit which is obtained and where this we have established that this E q the magnitude of the E q is equal to x a d i f that is called excitation voltage very simple expression. Now, we can derive the expression for for the complex power in terms of d and q axis components. Okay. Complex power s is equal to e t into i t star i t star this is i star stands for conjugate. Now, when you substitute the expression for E t and I t right in this expression, we get S equal to E d i d plus j times E q i q plus j times E q i d minus E d i q. Therefore, this term is identified as the real power and this term is the reactive power. So, that we can write down here that the real power at the terminal of the machine is E d i d plus E q i q that is you know the d x is component of voltage d x is component of the current q x is component of the voltage q x is component of the current right you multiply the corresponding voltage and currents and add them you get p t. Similarly, you obtain the expression for q t as E q i d minus E d i q. Okay. Now, we will establish one very uh, interesting exp expression for torque. 
because we have seen that the expression for torque is psi d i q minus psi q i d. This expression is a very general expression which we have established. Now, in these expressions we substitute the expression for psi d and psi q from the previous relationships established relationships and then simplify this equation. You will find that this torque T e that is the air gap torque will come out to be equal to the terminal power plus r a into i t square or we can say that i square r loss. What do we what do we understand here? Now, since in per unit quantities power and torque are equal, but when you use the per unit quantities then the torque is same as the power. Now, this torque is the air gap torque or we can and this air gap torque can be obtained as the terminal power plus the armature resistance loss right and therefore, whenever you perform the stability study analysis this is one computation which is required to be performed that first we find out what is the terminal power then to that terminal power we add the armature resistance loss okay, and that gives us the electromagnetic torque and that is what we will be substituting in the expression for swing equations that is in the swing equation we have to substitute T e the T is computed using this expression and, and under steady state conditions right the mechanical torque is equal to the electrical torque therefore, mechanical torque is computed by this expression right while electrical torque will be will continue to be computed by this expression because under dynamic conditions this is the expression for electromagnetic torque under dynamic conditions for under steady state condition we can say that the steady state torque is equal to terminal power plus losses this is a very important step in case you neglect the armature resistance then terminal power is same as the electromagnetic torque but today with the availability of computing facility right and the capability of the digital computers there is no need to neglect the armature resistance because armature resistance losses are substantial okay and they have uh, a bearing on the stability results now we come to the very important aspect of modeling of the system so far so far we have neglected the saturation in the magnetic circuit this was neglected to simplify the mathematical model however however the magnetic saturation need to be accounted and if we neglect it then the errors in the results are sometimes substantial and therefore there is a necessity to understand how do we account for the saturation in the magnetic circuit now to understand how do we account for the saturation in the magnetic circuit? We will look into open and short circuit characteristic of the synchronous generator. All of you are aware, aware of open circuit characteristic of the synchronous generator, short circuit characteristic of the synchronous generator and we will see that the open circuit characteristic is very useful in determining the saturation characteristic of the machine. Okay. Now, we write that under no load conditions we had established earlier also I d, I q, psi q and E d these four terms were 0 when the machine is not loaded right the, the I d and I q components of the current are 0, psi q 0 and E d is also 0 this is what we have established in our previous discussion. Then the terminal voltage E t came out to be equal to L a d I f t that is this terminal voltage is directly proportional to the field current. 
okay. and this terminal voltage is also called excitation voltage under no load conditions. Under no load condition, this is also the excitation voltage. Now, let us look at the at this characteristic. On this axis, I am I have shown the field current IFD and on this axis we are showing the open circuit terminal voltage in per unit. Okay. When you perform the open circuit characteristic or perform the experiment to obtain the open circuit characteristic, what we do is we run the machine at rated speed okay, and note down the terminal voltage for different values of the field current. Now, here while plotting this characteristic I have neglected the residual flux. Okay. Otherwise, there is some residual flux you will get that even if the field current is 0 there will be some that is that has been neglected here. Now, the, the open circuit characteristic will look like this okay. that is it remains straight line and then starts getting saturation. Now, if we draw a tangent to the open circuit characteristic in the initial portion right then we get a straight line we can draw a straight line which is tangent to the initial portion of the OCC we call this air gap line. Now, here here we will define uh, two field currents that is if the terminal voltage is 1 per unit the field current required when you consider the saturation is I f n L. In case we ignore the saturation, then the field current required is I f n L A g. A g stands for that on air gap line considering the uh, air gap line. Okay. Now, if we plot short circuit characteristic that is on this axis I am putting short circuit armature current in per unit here again the same field current this short circuit characteristic comes out to be a straight line. While you perform the short circuit characteristic the machine is run at rated speed and the terminals of the machine are put short sorted. Okay. Now, there is no saturation when you are performing the short circuit characteristic uh, that is you consider actually the short circuit current right for different values of the field current even beyond the rated current you will find that there is hardly any saturation. The basic reason for for the short circuit characteristic comes out coming out to be straight line can be attributed that under short circuit condition right the armature current is having the demagnetizing effect. Okay. And because of the demagnetizing effect, the resultant magnetic field which is produced in the air gap or in the iron core is very low and therefore, saturation does not take place right. This is a very important point. Now, here we can now define uh, unsaturated reactance of the machine and then we will define saturated reactance for the machine. Now, to define this that is what we do here is that when the synchronous machine when the synchronous machine terminals are shorted and let us say it carries 1 per unit current right. At that time whatsoever is the induced EMF due to this field current is used in overcoming the drop in the short circuited path. If you neglect the armature resistance armature resistance then we can say that the induced EMF is a some constant times I f S c equal to 1 into excess unsaturated. Okay. That is the under short circuit condition there is no saturation in the system right therefore, the reactance which we talk about is unsaturated reactance. 
and the voltage induced is some constant time the field current. Okay. Then if we see here the open circuit characteristic, then one per unit voltage is produced when the current is equal to I F N L. Okay. Now, being the cost proportionality constant same, that is K I F N L A G equal to one. Right. Therefore, using these two equations, we can establish that the unsaturated value of synchronous reactance is equal to I F S C divided by I F N L A G. This is a very important uh, uh, term that is what is the value of unsaturated synchronous reactance or unsaturated value of synchronous reactance that is x s unsaturated is obtained using the open circuit characteristic uh, I am sorry open circuit characteristic and short circuit characteristic that is on this short circuit characteristic we draw we find out what is the field current required to produce one per unit current in the armature under short circuit condition. Similarly, we find out how much is the how much is the current which is required to produce one per unit voltage under on air gap line again this is I am putting here air gap line right. Therefore, this ratio of I F S C upon I F and then there is the ratio of I F S C and I F N L A G gives you the saturated unsaturated value of synchronous reactance. Okay. Now, when we look at the saturated value of the synchronous reactance. Now, we can find out the value of saturated uh, synchronous reactance that to produce one per unit voltage under open circuit condition, the field current required is I F N L. Okay. This I F N L A Z was on air gap line, while I F N L is on O C C. Right. Therefore, since open circuit characteristic there is some saturation taking place. Therefore, the field current required is I F N L and following the same approach as we had done earlier. Now, we can write down that saturated value of the synchronous reactance is I F S C divided by I F N L. Normally, we perform the uh, open circuit and short circuit test to find out the synchronous reactance of the machine the synchronous reactance which we compute by doing open circuit and short circuit tests are the will give you the saturated value of the synchronous reactance. Okay. Now, our task is that to relate to relate the unsaturated value of synchronous reactance to the saturated value of the synchronous reactance. Okay. Now, to relate this before I relate this uh, one more term which is very commonly used I am just introducing that is the short circuit ratio. The short circuit ratio is defined as I F N L divided by I F S C and it comes out to be the reciprocal of reciprocal of saturated synchronous reactance. Right? Now, if the if the since short circuit ratio is low that is that synchronous reactance is high and in fact, uh, uh, in industry we very very frequently use this term short circuit ratio and it also gives the information about the quality of the machine. Now, for representing the uh, magnetic saturation for stability studies we make some realistic assumptions. The assumptions made are that the leakage inductances are independent of saturation. 
when we talked about the various inductances, we found mutual inductances as well as the leakage inductances, right. For example, LD direct axis uh, inductance LD is equal to LAD plus LL. LL is the leakage component, okay, and LAD is LAED is due to the flux which which crosses air gap, goes through the field winding and again return back through the armature. Okay. Now, since this leakage flux is mostly takes path through the air right? and uh, it crosses the uh, iron, but, but it is but, uh, it does not contribute toward the saturation of the iron. Right, because the, the reluctance to the leakage flux path is mostly due to the air, and therefore, we make this realistic assumption that the leakage inductances are independent of saturation. Second is the leakage fluxes do not contribute to saturation of iron core, that is the same thing. The leakage fluxes do pass through the iron core, but we assume here that do not contribute to the saturation. This is an assumption, this a realistic assumption, but not very very strictly applicable, but acceptable for stability studies. This is another very important is that saturation relationship between the resultant air gap flux and the MMF under loaded conditions, the same as under no load conditions. Now, this is very uh, <coughs> important assumption here that we will establish the saturation relationship using the open circuit characteristic right while while we assume here that that this relationship is also applicable under loaded conditions okay that is the saturation relationship between the resultant air gap flux and mmf under loaded conditions is same as under no load conditions. Okay? That is why the open circuit characteristic is very useful and used for determining the saturation characteristic. Okay? Then another is that there is no magnetic coupling between D axis and Q axis as a result of non linearities between the non linearities introduced by saturation. Because here here under linear conditions we assume that the d axis and q axis uh, magnetic circuit do not have any coupling okay and even if there is non linearities now in the magnetic circuit we assume that that coupling does not exist even under non linearities this is what is the meaning of this now with this assumption we will now concentrate upon the these terms mutual inductance that is LAD and LAQ. Is, now, this LAD is the mutual inductance considering saturation and we express LAD that mutual inductance with saturation is equal to KSD times mutual inductance unsaturated U stands for unsaturated. LAD U and this term KSD is called direct axis saturation coefficient KSD. Okay. Similarly, for quadrature axis we can write down LAQ equal to KSQ LAQ LAQ U that U again stands for unsaturated value of mutual inductance and this KSD and KSQ are the saturation coefficients. In fact, our basic task is to obtain these coefficients. Okay. Now, here again we look at the open circuit characteristic. Now, in this open circuit characteristic on this axis that is on y axis we are putting the voltage open circuit voltage 
or flux linkages because we have established that the open circuit voltage is proportional to the flux linkage okay and on this axis you can put field current or the mmf okay now we see two important things here that for a given field current i right if i consider the saturated characteristic that is open circuit characteristic i find that the the total air gap flux produced is psi at okay if you neglect the saturation then the for the same field current the flux produced is psi atu is that because this this is the uh, line this is the air gap line okay and when you are operating at this point the field current is say i okay for this same for this field current the flux produced is psi at when you consider the occ and the flux produced is equal to psi at o if i consider the air gap line right the the saturation coefficient ksd is defined as psi at divided by psi ato this this saturation coefficient on direct axis or direct axis saturation coefficient ksd is equal to psi at that is the flux linkage corresponding to current i on open circuit characteristic and psi ato is the flux linkage on air gap line for the same current and you can see here very clearly that this ratio is same as psi o i o by i and it is going to be always less than 1 the saturated value of the inductance is going to be less than the unsaturated value of the inductance therefore we can see here actually that whether i take the ratio of psi at o uh, to psi at or psi at to psi at o or i take the ratio of i o to i they will give the same result okay now we define here difference the psi at o minus psi at this difference flux linkage we denote by psi i and this psi i is very important to determine the saturation characteristic of the machine now we define psi i as psi at o minus psi at and ksd can now be written as psi at divided by psi at plus psi i that is i replace this psi at o by psi i plus psi at right therefore the major exercise will be that for a given value of psi at we have to find out what is the value of this psi i so that we can compute the saturation coefficient ksd now here now Uh, we have to basically model this OCC open circuit characteristics to be model. That is, we have to develop a model for the open circuit characteristic. Once we, I know this, this is the model of the open circuit characteristic. I can always find out find out this psi i for a given value of psi at. Okay. Now, for modeling, if you look at this characteristic, then initially this characteristic is a straight line. Okay, then you will find actually that from then this characteristic is practically following exponential shape, and then once it gets fully saturated, again it is going to become a straight line. If you carefully examine the open circuit characteristic, right, then you can divide this open circuit characteristic into three segments. That is, the first segment is one where the 
flux linkage is proportional to the field current that is the unsaturated condition. Second segment yes the, the iron core starts getting saturated and the characteristic is a nonlinear one. Okay. Then in the third segment this characteristic becomes a straight line. Under saturated condition what happens is that when you increase the MMF the air gap flux is going to increase. Right? But this increase is going to be linear relationship again. Therefore, for modeling the uh, open circuit characteristic or magnetization characteristic of the machine, we divide this characteristic into three segments and these three segments are unsaturated segment, non-linear segment and third is fully saturated linear segment. This is the new thing which you have to very carefully understand. Okay. Now, these three segments are uh, shown here and psi t 1 is the boundary, va boundary value of flux linkage for the segment 1. Psi t 2 is the boundary value of the flux linkage for second segment psi t 2 and beyond this it is a linear linear characteristic. Okay. Therefore, now what we do is that whenever you try to model right we this characteristic is available to us experimentally you obtain the characteristic whichever way you obtain it this characteristic is known to you. Okay. Now, I can define here in this linear portion if I take uh, one per unit value on the on the x axis that is I take this as a x axis and I call this vertical height as L i n e r i n c r incremental l incremental right. Then I can write down the slope equal to the slope of this characteristic can be written as i l n c r that is this is the straight line characteristic which slope you have to obtain. Okay. Our the, these three segments can be modeled very easily. So far actually the segment 1 is concerned, segment 1 is concerned the psi a t is less than equal to psi t 1 which is the boundary for segment 1 right and therefore, the this psi i term is 0 that is the actual OCC and the air, air gap line they are coinciding right and therefore, the psi i which is the difference between psi a t o and psi a t is 0. The second segment is a non-linear segment. Okay. Uh, the boundary values are psi a t should be greater than psi t 1 and less than equal to psi t 2. Okay. This is the range we have already established for the second segment that is the segment second segment is the psi a t anywhere on this line right. This is going to be in this range psi t 1 and psi t 2. Now, this can be modeled by a equation of this form the exponential form of equation that is psi i can be written as psi i can be written as a s a t that is a saturation this is a coefficient this, uh, this subscript s a t is used to indicate that we are trying to model the saturation that is psi i equal to a saturation e to the power b saturation multiplied by psi a t minus psi a t 1. What is this psi i? this is the difference between psi a t o and psi a t and this psi i can be modeled by this expression where you for any value of psi a t psi a t you find out this difference psi a t 1 psi t 1 is known to you and these coefficients have to be obtained these coefficients have to be obtained actually for a given machine. Okay. When these coefficients are known psi i can be computed. Now, here if you see 
that if I put psi a t equal to psi t 1 right that is actually at the beginning of this segment psi a t is equal to psi t 1 you can again look here at this point right at this point psi i is 0 right but when I use this equation psi i will come out to be equal to a s a t this is a slight discrepancy at this boundary. However, in practice this term psi a t is small right and therefore, this discrepancy is not very significant because when I use this equation and try to put actually the initial value that is psi a t equal to psi t 1 right then psi i should come out to be 0, but it is not coming out to be 0 by this equation right. However, since psi a set this coefficient is generally very small and therefore, this discrepancy is a negligible, a negligible or can be ignored. Because again uh, let me uh, emphasize here that we are trying to develop the model okay? and for this developing the model we have to very carefully obtain these coefficients because when I said is exponential I have to do curve fitting okay? and once these coefficients are obtained we obtain actually the model for psi i. Now, the last segment which is again a straight line a fully saturated segment third segment the fully saturated one. Okay. Now, here I, we have to find out find out what is the value of psi i when psi a t is beyond psi t 2 right. Now, to obtain this uh, what we really do here is uh, we, we may have to write down the equation for this segment is a straight line you can write down the equation of this segment in the form of y equal to m x plus c a straight line okay? and then you know this equation for this line. What is the equation for this air gap line? You simply write down psi a t equal to L a d u into i f d because this is a, a pa line passing through origin while this line is not going to pass through origin therefore, you have to make use of the initial initial conditions that is actually that uh, our initial conditions are that when the flux is equal to psi t 2 right psi t 2 the field current is i f d o something you can note it down that is because you are, this is the segment which you are trying to model right. Now, you do this exercise because this exercise you can do and obtain the expression for the psi i which is which is the difference between actual psi a t and psi a t o right. Now, psi i has been obtained in this case as psi g 2 plus L ratio into psi a t minus psi t 2 minus psi a t. Now, this I, I will suggest all of you to derive the expression psi i equal to psi g 2 plus L ratio psi a t minus psi t 2 minus i a t. I have uh, already checked it, it comes out to be ok, there is no discrepancy. Now, here what is done here is that when the flux linkage is psi t 2 right, we find out actually the value of flux linkage on air gap that is for this psi t 2 you note down this current and for the same current you can find out a flux linkage which is on air gap line corresponding to the air gap line that is called psi g 2 and using this information that for this particular current this point is lying on the uh, third segment characteristic right and using this value that the flux linkage is psi g 2 right therefore, basically at this point at this point psi i is equal to psi g 2 right therefore, if I substitute here in this equation in this equation right if psi 
if I take psi a t, if I take this psi a t equal to psi t 2 and this term becomes 0 right and psi i becomes psi g 2 minus psi a t. No, no, psi, the psi t 2 is nothing but psi a t actually right. Therefore, this equation is satisfied okay? and this can be derived. Now, once you are in a position to obtain this quantity psi i, the coefficient k s d is known. Okay? Now, next point is how to obtain the saturation coefficient for q axis. Okay? Now, so far actually the d axis is concerned we have OCC. For q axis we do not have similar open circuit characteristic, we cannot plot it. Now, here generally we made one assumption that in the q axis the saturation is 0. A very realistic assumption that you can make this assumption that on q axis that is the saturation coefficient k s q is equal to 1. Because the magnetic the flux takes its path through a larger air gap when you talk about the q axis of the machine. Now, when we are talking about this, the, the flux psi a t is equal to psi a d square psi a q square. That is the flux which we have been talking about, right, is the total flux in the air gap psi a t equal to psi a d square plus psi a q square. Now, here we will just establish one very uh, simple relationship using our expressions for psi a d and psi a q psi a d and psi a q these are the expressions which were known to you. The relationships are that is you write down the expression for psi a t that is you write down the expression for psi a d which is psi d plus l l i d and psi a q as psi q plus l l i q okay. and psi d can be written by this expression psi d is psi a d is equal to e q plus r a i q psi q is written as minus e d minus r a i d these are the equations which we have already developed earlier. And now if you substitute this in the equation for psi a t right you will find actually that psi a t when you express in per unit because we are all doing per unit calculations this psi a t will come out to be simply as a voltage E a E t plus R a plus j times xl into i t that is this psi a t is a voltage behind psi a t is a voltage behind or is equal to the voltage behind behind this impedance that is R a plus j times xl that is E q when we are talking about that was the voltage behind R a plus j times x q. Okay? Now, here it is only talking about the leakage reactance this is, is established by substituting these expressions. Now, with this we have uh, established how do we obtain the saturated value of the reactances required for calculations. Now, if you see it very carefully here, then for each operating condition, you know for each operating condition you have to find out what is the saturated value. It is not same for all operating conditions. This coefficient k s d is different for different operating conditions. You can easily see here that psi a t when I say psi a t is obtained corresponding to one particular operating condition okay? and for that we have to find out psi a t o okay? and this ratio psi a t upon psi a t o gives you saturation coefficient and this psi a t is different I, and therefore, we get the different value of saturation coefficient and that is why uh, when you perform the stability studies stability studies right, the, the saturation has to be computed. Uh, as the loading condition keeps on changing. 
or different loading condition different value of saturation coefficient is to be used. Uh, with this uh, I am concluding here the modeling of synchronous machines for stability studies. Uh, today we have talked about the, the method of modeling modeling the saturation right how, how it has been done basically we started with the basic definition of what we mean by saturation coefficient and then the, the OCC open circuit characteristic is divided into three segments and for each segment we have written the expression for the flux linkage psi i which is the difference between psi a t o and psi a t. That is psi a t o is the flux linkage for a given field current on air gap line right and then we compute the value of saturation coefficient. Further we have assumed here the saturation coefficient on q axis as 1 that is saturation is neglected and this can be considered. Uh, with this uh, let me say that we have completed the synchronous machine modeling this modeling is complete. In the next chapter we will study the synchronous machine model for stability studies. Okay? Uh, when we talk about the actual model of the synchronous machine we are considering here now the, the stator circuit rotor circuit transient and in the stator circuit we have we have made the assumption that the derivative terms are negligible as compared to the speed voltage terms. Therefore, this assumption will be carried over for stability studies also that is when we have written the stator circuit equations we have ignored the transformer voltages and therefore, this assumption will be carried over beyond for stability studies also. However, there will be some more assumptions that can be made and simplified to obtain and uh, are made to obtain the simple uh, synchronous machine model for stability studies. Now, when we talk about the modeling the next step will be to model the excitation system and the models for turbines and governors that makes the complete model for the energy system that is turbine, governor, excitation system and synchronous generator that is the complete thing we will devote few more turns to develop the uh, models for the excitation system and this. Okay? Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.